Light that spark fire nation, JLD here, and welcome to episode 1931 of EO Fire, where I chat with entrepreneurs on fire seven days a week. Productivity, discipline, focus, those are my three greatest strengths, Fire Nation, and they can be yours too. Just visit themasteryjournal.com, master all three skills in 100 days. Now let's chat with today's featured guest, Drum roll, please, for Mr. Ross Jeffries. Ross, are you prepared to ignite? I am already on fire. Yes. I am burning a big one. <laughs> Ross is a master change worker, speaker, and teacher of persuasion. For the past 30 years, he sought the power of conversation to heal, influence, convert, and sell. Ross, take a minute, fill in some gaps from that intro, and give us just a little glimpse of your personal life. Yeah, so let me fill in a few gaps and then a glimpse into my personal life. I am a master practitioner of NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, and I've been doing hypnosis for all sorts of things, curing stage fright, et cetera, et cetera. And so what I do is take my understandings from my hypnosis practice, and I've been able to map that over into selling because my recognition is that all of our decisions are mostly made unconsciously anyway. As far as my personal life, I am an incredible cat lover. I am a cat oholic, and <laughs> I just adore the little furry things. I think they're superior to humans in every way. <laughs> in every way. I love every that. Every way. So let's do this, Ross. You have a lot of skills, but I would love for you just to share what you think your highest level of expertise is with all of those skill sets. Sure. So my expertise is teaching entrepreneurs, small businesses, even large businesses, how to use subtle conversations that convert, close, and sell. And here's the thing, without pressuring, pushing, or pitching. So the clue here is to capture and lead the imagination, the emotions of your prospect so they feel like it's their own idea. Because whatever we can get a person to imagine for themselves will be perceived as their own idea and therefore they will not resist it. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Now within that, my main curiosity is what's something that we as entrepreneurs don't practice or we just don't know, or you just are like, man, it would be really helpful if they did this. Like what's something that we can learn from that area of expertise? Very good question. The first thing I would say is your old ways of selling don't work nearly as well as they used to for two primary reasons. First of all, your prospects have probably heard it all before. They're very sophisticated and they're insulted by the old taglines, isn't it Mr. Smith and don't you Mr. Jones? <laughs> but even more importantly, everyone, here's the keener insight. Your prospect no longer, ha no longer has the focus they once had to pay attention to what it is you're pitching them. Here's a challenge I have for all your listeners. Step outside and count the number of people who are walking around with their smartphones glued to their faces. So you see the amount of distraction. The way I like to put it in a colorful metaphor is this entire culture is orbiting around the dark star of overstimulation and distraction. So nowadays you have just a minute or so to capture that focus and keep that focus on you. It's no longer just about getting people to trust you, which is important, et cetera, et cetera. You've got to get their focus on you. Or even if they're interested in what you have to say, they're probably going to drop the focus. What do you find are some really good ways to keep people's focus? Sure. So first and foremost, and this is going to sound like an outrageous claim, John. It's going to sound like an audacious claim. I love audaciousness. Well, my audacious claim is through using hypnotic suggestion, and I know people have a lot of loaded emotions around the word <laughs> hypnosis. You can get people to pay attention right away. So let's say I was giving a talk. I would say something like, you know, before we get going, sharing this information, I'm not sure which places you'll stop and find yourself growing more and more fascinated about what it is I have to say. But as that's taking place, will you make me one promise? Will you promise to share the questions that naturally occur when a great learning is about to take place? Now, did I say anything specific there, John? No, I was really focusing too. <laughs> exactly. And did I say at what points you'll find yourself focusing? No. no. I didn't even say what you'll be focused on. 
all I did is give the suggestion that you'll find yourself focusing. Now, what does it mean to find yourself doing something? It means it implies a lack of conscious control, a lack of conscious effort. Did you ever just find yourself reaching for the refrigerator? Too often. Okay. Did you ever just find yourself falling in love? Yeah. Or find yourself driving down the highway and suddenly you didn't even realize half an hour had gone by. That's pretty scary. So find yourself implies a lack of conscious control which means it's simply going to happen. So that is, even though that was a big mouthful, I'm sure as people begin to find themselves listening over and over to this episode, they'll discover the truth of what it was I had to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, just be careful because a lot of people are driving right now. We don't want to hypnotize okay. anybody. All right, pull over. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk, Ross, about one of your stories throughout your entrepreneurial journey. I mean, you've had a lot of stories. We've all had stories throughout our lives, but which one would you consider your worst entrepreneurial moment to oh, date? Oh, my goodness. So I had a business partner for about 16 years who was like a surrogate father to me. And I figured we're never, ever going to break up. We're never going to have a problem. But sure enough, we had some major differences in the business. We wound up getting a business divorce. Now, I didn't know it, but my domain, he had actually had the formal registration on it. And what he did is as soon as we had this little business divorce going on and while our lawyers were negotiating it, he shut off the domain. He did a kamikaze, even though he oh. meant it would be no revenue for him. He shut off the whole thing. So I couldn't run a business. I had to scramble around to find another domain. And the result of it was after like six months when I got the domain back, all me, all of my SEO efforts were gone. And it took two years to rebuild the popularity of that site. Oh. So uh, never, ever. The lesson is, uh, first of all, don't assume that your partnerships are going to last forever. And second, if something is critical to the business, don't make an assumption that it's yours. <laughs> make sure that it belongs to you. Look at the document. Do whatever you can to make sure it actually really belongs to you because that – destroyed my stream of income for months and then damaged it severely for two years. So you did just share a, a big lesson, a big takeaway, but let's dig a little bit deeper here. Like what's mm -hmm. something that you would really recommend our listeners doing if they find themselves currently in a situation where maybe they have a partner or maybe they're working with somebody like what should fire nation do to protect themselves? Oh my goodness. You're not Can I be totally brutally honest? Yeah. Okay, here's my philosophy. A thousand dollars spent on a private investigator beats a hundred thousand dollars spent on an attorney during a Whoa. lawsuit. Wow. Hire if it's a big money thing, I don't care. You don't have to tell them. Hire a private investigator for a thousand bucks or even a little bit more and do a thorough background check, criminal records, civil lawsuits, bankruptcies. Find out everything you can about that other person because this is your life's blood. This is your financial yeah. future that you're putting on the line. So hire a private investigator. That's what I do now. Anymore, when someone decides to approach me to do any kind of serious business, now I don't tell them that, but it it's absolutely necessary to do. I mean, Fire Nation, you know, this might seem like a serious step. Well, guess what? Life is serious. Guess what? Business and entrepreneurship are serious. So if you're going to get into a serious ball game, you got to be ready to protect yourself. You have to be ready to be serious. Now, let's shift and talk about a little bit of a lighter subject, Ross. And this topic is one of the greatest ideas that you've had today because, brother, you've had some aha moments. <laughs> but I want to know one of the greatest ideas that you've had. Take us to that moment and tell us that story. Okay. So here's what was going on. For a long time, I was in my mind, I was providing the best solutions to the problems that my clients and customers had. And it wasn't just in my mind. When I did get clients and customers, they were raving about me. But here's the problem. Uh, it's an idea that really, really came into my mind. I woke up in the morning and changed how I do business. And here it is. People will not accept you're an authority on where they should go unless they first accept you're an authority on where they're at. So this implies that it's the person who comes up with the best diagnosis 
that's going to get the business, not the person that necessarily has the best solution. So before you get people to take your solution seriously, you better make them feel that they're in, you're inside their head. You better make them feel that you are diagnosing their problem with extreme accuracy. Again, it's the person who comes up with the best perceived diagnosis that's going to grab the customer or at least is going to get a serious hearing when it comes time to providing the solution. Now, this goes contrary to our nature as entrepreneurs. We're very passionate about what we do, and you've got to be passionate about what you do. And you got to set your ego aside and say, that's great. I'm passionate about my solution. But if my avatar, my best client or customer doesn't perceive that I understand the problem, I'm probably not going to get a good hearing. And so I began to put that aspect into all of my copywriting because I write my own copy and all the talks I give and every piece of free content, I put that perception that I really understood their problem first and foremost. And that doesn't just involve the Fs, the fears, failures, and frustrations. I want to complete that picture and say it also involves what I call the three Ds, their desires, their dreams, and if they have it, their sense of destiny, their sense of what they deserve. When I do a lot of my stuff in the other business, and we have to bring it up, is I'm a dating coach for guys. And one of the messages I give them towards the end of any communication is you deserve to have this success. It's your birthright, and it's not your fault that you're not getting it. So tap into your client or customer's sense of deservingness. What do they feel that they deserve, that their sense that they're entitled to this? Even though we know in life we're not entitled to anything, that doesn't mean that your client or customer believes that. They usually believe that they are entitled. We live in a society of entitlement when where people believe that you're entitled. Now, you can either fight that reality to your own detriment or you can utilize it desires, dreams, and a sense of destiny. I mean, think about those three Ds, Fire Nation. How do they apply to your life? When you wake up in the morning, think about these things. When you're journaling, when you're meditating, and just recognize, hey, is this the path that I want to be on? Am I following my desires? Am I realizing my dreams? Do I feel like I even have this sense of destiny? Now, you, Ross, have a sense of destiny, and you have a lot of things Absolutely. going on right now. Absolutely. What would you say is the one thing that you are most excited about today? This is going to sound like I'm buttering your bread, but doing this <laughs> interview, I've been looking forward. This has been booked for three months. Yeah. I've been looking forward to it. I'm like, this guy, John Lee Dumas, is at the top of the mountain. This guy has a million listeners. This is an incredible opportunity for people to now recognize, wow, Ross Jeffries is someone I need to learn more from. <laughs> See, I can't help it. This kind of <laughs> using language patterns, John, has become part of how I communicate. I, I had a girlfriend say to me, is there, is there any circumstances under which you wouldn't be able to use all this stuff? And I thought about it. I thought, well, you tied me down, propped my eyes open, uh, shut my mouth closed and tied my hands behind my back and hooked me up to like an electric shock. So anytime even my emotions changed, I would get electrocuted maybe then, but pretty much it's become who I am and how I walk through my world. Fire Nation, if you think Ross has been dropping value bombs, well, you are right. He has. Kaboom. But more coming up in the lightning round when we get back from thanking our sponsors. If there's one marketing strategy that's been most impactful in my business, it's hosting live webinars. If you're looking for a better way to reach your audience, then hosting webinars is a great option. People aren't just going to stumble upon your website and then immediately make a purchase. I've found webinars to be one of the most effective ways to connect with your audience and potential customers and provide a ton of value in the process. Webinars are kind of like podcasts, except they're visual and interactive, so you can have a two-way conversation with your audience. Plus, you don't have to pay someone else to create a webinar for you. You can create your own. Start hosting your webinars today with GoToWebinar. GoToWebinar is the most trusted webinar platform, and they can prove it because they've helped businesses like yours host over 2.3 million webinars. GoToWebinar has the reliability and the features that you need to deliver webinars your audience will love. For more information, visit gotowebinar.com slash fire. That's go to webinar.com slash fire. 
When it comes to booking client or team meetings, it shouldn't take hours to find the perfect meeting room. And with DaVinci, it won't. Their new mantra, search, book, meet. With DaVinci, it's that simple because they offer incredibly affordable meeting rooms in well-known office locations in every city. That means if you need to set up a meeting with a client face-to-face or bring your team together for a brainstorming session, all you have to do is search, book, and meet. DaVinci has conference rooms, boardrooms, training spaces, you name it. The right room you need when you need it is just a few clicks away. Say you're based in Phoenix, but you need to meet with a client in New York, skip the coffee shop meeting and get a DaVinci meeting room instead. It's fast, affordable, comes with high speed internet and presentation tools, and it all starts at just $10 an hour. For a limited time, visit davincimeet.com slash fire for 50% off your first purchase. Terms and conditions apply. See davincimeet.com slash fire for details. Ross, are you ready to rock the lightning rounds? I can't wait to rock that (laughs) lightning round. What was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? (laughs) Oh, man, it's just embarrassing. I thought I could make it as a stand-up comic and a comedy writer. So that's what I wanted to do first. And John, I am proud to say I wrote one of the worst movies ever made. (laughs) It was made? still Uh, The name of it is They Still Call Me Bruce. I believe it was Leonard Malton who called it, and I quote, a cinematic abortion. And and when I saw it in a theater like three years later, I literally – have you ever heard the phrase a snapping moment or I just snapped? Yes. I literally had a snapping moment. It felt like a rubber band. It snapped in the center of my forehead. I'm not exaggerating. I saw a flash of blinding white light. I'm not kidding. And my career ended right then and there. Is it currently available on Amazon? They still call me Bruce. You could probably find it, but thank goodness they took my name off the writer's <laughs> credit. I begged them to do that. I begged them and begged them, and they finally did. But I do have a VHS copy, and now uh, I burned it onto a D, uh, um, uh, DVD. So if I have a girlfriend over and or a date and the date's not going well, I make them watch it, and they get up and leave like within 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> So they still call me Bruce. When you're as attractive as I am, it's not a matter about getting them to come to you. It's a matter of how do you get rid of them when they're boring. (laughs) (laughs) And my cat is now coming here to help me with the interview. (laughs) Oh, man. They still call me Bruce. Uh, What's the best advice you've ever received? My mentor and my champion said this, and it really struck home with me. Failures seek opinions. Winners seek opinions counsel. I'll say it again. Failures seek opinions. Winners seek counsel. Should I unpack that for you? Yeah. Take a minute. If you have some idea for your business and you go and ask your brother-in-law, what do you think of this? He may give you an opinion, do it, not do it. I'm not sure. But counsel is thought from those who have done it before, who are masters, who are experts, who've shown it through what they've actually done in the world. And my speaking, I have a mentor for my speaking, and he is someone I go and seek counsel. When I have a stuck point, I want to improve what I'm already doing with excellence. He's the person I turn to. And that was incredibly good advice. I've never, ever, ever again sought opinions from people. I've always now seek counsel from people who have already done what I want to do. I would never do a podcast unless I could get time with you and say, <laughs> hey, I need, I need some counsel here. What's a personal habit that contributes to your success? No doubt about it. It's far and away the most important thing I do in all of my life. I meditate. It is transformed not only my ability to be successful in business, it's transformed my entire experience of what it means to be a human being. It's taken all the resentment and envy and contempt and need to be right, all of that that I was carrying with me. And it's helped me to transmute it and to purify it into genuine gratitude for what I have. And here's an even more important thing, happiness for the success of others. People talk a lot about gratitude, but no one has ever really talked about having genuine happiness for the success of others. And I think that's the other side of the coin of gratitude that completes the gratitude picture. Recommend one internet resource. 
I use Zoom. I don't like the Skype platform. I know you use it, but I love Zoom. I use it for my coaching because you can share screens. You can make video recordings. It's great whether I'm doing one-on-one or whether I'm training a larger group. I love Zoom. Zoom is superior on every level than Skype, especially on when it comes to video. Uh, I love yeah, it. for me, it's just I've been so ingrained all my systems with Skype that I'm kind of stuck on it for now. But uh, Zoom is the only thing that I recommend when it comes to video. What do you recommend for a book and why? No question about it. I recommend a book called The Science of Enlightenment, written by my meditation teacher, Shinzen Young. And the reason I recommend it is that book made meditation available to me. I never believed in it. I thought it was woo-woo and airy-fairy and completely out there. But he makes meditation available in a rigorous way to the scientific mind that enabled me to do it. He made sense of it for me and described it in a way that was elegant and rigorous. And I I can't recommend that enough. He also has a audio series by the same name, which is equally good, The Science of Enlightenment. And that man is the single most brilliant human being I have ever met in my life and the greatest teacher of my life. And I've been fortunate enough to have fantastic teachers, but he is head and shoulders above everybody else. Fire Nation, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And you've been hanging out with RS and JLD today. So make sure that you keep up the heat. And Ross, I want to end on fire with you giving a parting piece of guidance, sharing the best way that we can connect with you, and then we'll say goodbye. Sure. Let me share the piece of guidance. It's a bit of a mouthful. When you have a major decision you're facing in your business, not a minor one, but a major decision, here's what you do. You write down every assumption that you're making. For each assumption, ask yourself, do I have any data, proof, or evidence that this assumption is true? And if you don't, if you don't have data or evidence that it's true, ask yourself this question. What is the one piece of work that making this assumption allows me to avoid doing. So if you're making an assumption and you don't have data to back it up, ask yourself, what is the one piece of work that making this assumption allows me to avoid and then do that piece of work? Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. That was a mouthful and you unpacked it beautifully. So share how we can find out more about you. It's very, very easy. If you now find yourself interested in talking to me more about maybe coming in and giving a talk to your group or your organization or doing a training, it's very simple to get in touch with me. Just go to Ross Jeffries. That's J-E-F-F-R-I-E-S, J-E-F-F-R-I-E-S, RossJeffriesLive.com. Ross Jeffries Live.com. In Fire Nation, you can always just head over to eofire.com. And if you type Ross R O S S in the search bar, everything we talked about today will be right there. He'll be linked up. All that we do is right there for you. But again, go directly to Ross Jeffries Live.com to check him out. And Ross, I want to say thank you for sharing your journey with Fire Nation today. For that, brother, we salute you and we'll catch you on the flip side. (laughs) The pleasure genuinely, the honor has genuinely been entirely mine. Hey, Fire Nation, hope you enjoyed our chat with Ross today. And I've created Cinco, that is five in Spanish, incredible courses so that you can master productivity, you can accomplish goals, you can crush Kickstarter, you can create funnels and webinars that convert, and they're all free, Fire Nation, and they're waiting for you at eofire.com. I'll catch you there, or I'll catch you on the flip side. If there's one marketing strategy that has been most impactful in my business, it's hosting live webinars. And you can start hosting your own webinars today with GoToWebinar. GoToWebinar has the reliability and the features you need to deliver webinars your audience will love. For more information, visit gotowebinar.com slash fire. That's gotowebinar.com slash fire.